Good morning, everyone. Uh, welcome to AAMG YouTube channel. Uh, we are very fortunate to invite our AAMG pulmonologist, um, Dr. Fred Hom. Um, welcome, Dr. Hom. Nice to be here. So, uh, Dr. Hom, we, we actually uh, collected some questions uh, from our viewers. Uh, the first question we have is that uh, some viewers actually do understand that um, smokers are at risk for COVID-19. Um, and um, I think this is uh, the general public knows about this. But however, uh, recently there's some research uh, paper uh, published and our viewers actually uh, saw that and they asked um, why there's some recently, some research show uh, smokers actually demonstrate lower um, infection rate than those who quit smoking and or were non-smokers. Could you address um, the, this the reason finding? Yeah, this was a, an interesting article, uh, but people have to understand that this was just only an observational study. Observational study is not the same as cause and effect. So they looked at all these young, relatively healthy sailors on the aircraft carrier, and there was a difference in terms of the smokers who had less risk of COVID-19 compared to non-smokers. And it was statistically different, but clinically it was to me is not much different. So, so one flaw of the study is that it's observational. A second one, again, is these are young, healthy sailors. So we can't really generalize that to our population. Uh, we have patients in their 50s, 60s, 90s. So we can't say that this study pertains to them. Um, another thing about this study is that, so again, being young and healthy, they've only been smoking for a few years. I like to see a study that shows what happens if you've been smoking for 20 or 30 years, because there's lots of research showing that those people are more likely to have cancer. I like to know if there's a difference with long-term smokers in terms of catching COVID. And once again, once again this is on a board a ship, so we can't generalize what's on a ship compared to real life living out here in the community. So that's, that's also a, a big difference. We can't necessarily say that's the same population. And even the, uh, this particular study showed that 71% of the smokers still caught COVID. That's quite a bit compared to 80%. Clinically, that's not much difference, even as though using statistics, it seems uh, significant. But to me, that's still really high, whether you're a smoker or non-smoker. So that's another particular flaw because that's clinically, that's not much a real difference in real life when you're dealing with, with patients. And finally, the take home message, I think from this study, and this study also uh, mentions that, however, once you are infected, the, once the smokers are more likely to develop severe disease. And even that article uh, mentioned that. So that's my take home message from this particular paper, that uh, once you are infected and you're a smoker, you're more likely to develop severe disease. I see. Thank you. Yeah, so thank you for the, the bunk. Um, so could you actually address uh, what kind of uh, respiratory infections, uh, including COVID-19, smokers are more likely to uh, acquire? So smokers can develop any type of illness that non-smokers have, but they're more likely. Smoking affects the immune system, affects the actual the little hairs in the lungs. So there are those little hairs are injured and they're less likely to keep out uh, infections. So that's why if my smokers I make sure they get a flu vaccine every year, they get the pneumonia vaccine. Um, those are the vaccines that we have. Of course, now we have a COVID vaccine. So they can get the same infections, but at more a risk and more risk of having serious disease. There are particular uh, bacteria for long-term smokers with COPD that seem to be more common compared to non-smokers without COPD. There's some very, um, very, very uh, resistant and very powerful bacteria that can develop that non-smokers don't have. These have really, really long names. And when we treat with antibiotics, we have to consider whether there's smokers with COPD as opposed to non-smokers. Then we have to adjust which type of antibiotics to use. And the smokers with COPD can have developed these very, very strong and potent bacteria infections uh, that non-smokers would not necessarily develop. Mm, I see. In your clinical experience, uh, um, 
how's uh, smoking uh, harmful to our lung function? Most smokers will develop some type of damage to the lungs. Sometimes you can't, it's not measurable, if it's relatively mild, but other times the way to determine that objectively is with a complete pulmonary function test. We actually go and blow into a computer to measure if there's any lung damage. And people can smoke and have no particular symptoms, but when they do this pulmonary function test, uh, then you can actually tell if they have early disease or, or serious disease. That's the best way to determine if they have what we call COPD. And that's an also test for asthma also. And people can smoke and not develop any COPD, but um, if you're uh, just walking around feeling fine and you do a pulmonary function test, and you find out you do have COPD on the pulmonary function test, that is definitely a warning sign that it's that you better uh, quit smoking. I see, makes sense. So, so could, uh, during the COVID nineteen pandemic, uh, could you um, explain to us uh, what happened if we catch COVID nineteen, including uh, the smokers? Smokers can develop respiratory failure at a higher rate than non-smokers. Uh, non-smokers will still have severe disease, but smokers, and especially heavy smokers, are more likely to develop severe respiratory failure. So you can have the whole spectrum. You can have a very mild case and not have to be hospitalized. If you're a smoker, you're more likely to be hospitalized. You're more likely to have oxygen. And if that fails, you're more likely to need something called high flow oxygen. That it's a little special device that goes over the nose. If that fails, smokers will not like to need something called BiPAP, which is a mask that fits tight on the face. And with that, you're not allowed to eat and it's difficult to talk. Um, if that fails, and especially more so if you're a smoker, then you may need to be intubated with a tube into your airways and placed on a ventilator. And some studies show that once you're on the ventilator, there's a 50% chance that you will not survive and you'll pass away. So smokers are, especially heavy smokers, are much more likely to have a higher risk of respiratory failure and going on the ventilator and eventually passing away from complications of COVID. So, so it sounds like it's never too late to quit smoking. Is that right? Even my patients who are 80 years old, I tell them it's never too late uh, because some of the damage from smoking is permanent, but some can be in temporary. Uh, such as the coughing and the mucus and return of function of the little hairs in the airways and that will decrease your risk of infection. So it's never too late. You can always feel better when you stop. Uh, I tell patients to have less strength to breath, food tastes better, uh, to have less mucus, less cough, uh, less infection, and possibly even less COVID. So it's never too late. Thank you so much, Dr. Hong, for the valuable information to our viewers. My pleasure. Hope to see you next time. Okay, very good. Take care. Stay safe, everybody. Bye.